Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson was from the book of Amos, and, and I've always liked Amos. He's a, a, a down-to-earth sort of guy. Right out of the seminary, my very first assignment was to a little mission church just north of uh, Washington, D.C. And in those days, uh, every year there was a, um, uh, a training session, a convocation for Sunday school teachers. And since I was the new kid on the block, ecclesiastically speaking, uh, I was assigned to uh, do a presentation on the, the book of Amos. One of the things I immediately discovered about Amos was he wasn't a prophet, or at least he didn't claim to be a prophet. He was a, he was a layman. In fact, he was a herdsman and a, a slitter of sycamore fig trees. And he was from the south. He was a person that God simply chose and uh, gave a responsibility to uh, go up north and explain to the people all of their faults. So, when uh, the, at this particular time, uh, when Amos spoke, uh, the two kingdoms, the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah, really occupied about the same territory as uh, Solomon's kingdom did. And the caravan routes were reopened, and trade was flowing, and money was flowing. It was a prosperous time. And you know, it's interesting, when the kingdom was divided uh, between Rehoboam and the rebel uh, Jeroboam, uh, Jeroboam didn't want his people to go traipsing down south to, to the temple. And so he built a couple of sanctuaries, one at Dan and one at Bethel, in the northern kingdom for the convenience of his people. A, a church is a church, right? That's what he thought. Now, Amos delivered his message with his feet firmly planted in the sanctuary, in the king's sanctuary, in Bethel. And uh, if that wasn't bad enough, Amos was not politically correct. He talked about the, the cows of Bashan, those sleek, fat, well-fed ladies. Those, those ladies who were so caught up in material possessions that they were cajoling, pleading, threatening their husbands to move out of the, uh, the tract houses into, into Mac Mansions. And we're not going to take all that trashy furniture with us. You're going to have to get new stuff, too. <laughs> well, it wasn't just that bad. But he was poking his nose into business also. Why do we have to close the, the shop for holidays? There's bound to be a, a shekel still rolling around out there that would be much happier in our, in our uh, cash register. And uh, set, the, set the scales just a, a mite higher, if you would. Sweep up that, uh, that uh, wheat over there. Don't mind the dust. A uh, little dirt never hurt anybody. Yeah. And uh, get the open sign on. Uh, closing, the, closing the business for the Sabbath day uh, just costs us money. You know, with all the kinds of comments that Amos was making, uh, he just wouldn't be the kind of person that people would want to call to their church, would he? Amos seemed to have the idea that every aspect, every aspect of our lives really fit into God's relationship with his people. 
when I was at that little mission church, for one Sunday I decided that I would do a sermon based on uh, J.B. Phillips' title for his book, Your God is Too Small. And I got a con uh, cardboard box, uh, kind of like this one, And I said, you know, we act like we have God in a box. And we take him to church on Sunday morning, and uh, we open it up, and uh, we watch God work for an hour, or maybe two hours if we stay for Sunday school. But uh, after that time is over, we close the box up, and we take it back home, and we put it in the drawer with our underwear uh, so he won't bother anything. Uh, during the rest of the week. Or uh, sometimes uh, if we get mad at somebody, uh, we take our God box out of, uh, out of the, the drawer and we open it up a crack and we say, go get him, God. And if he does, that takes care of any problem that we might have. Uh, the other day I pulled out of a, a driveway uh, a little bit too close in front of a, a car, and uh, the fellow driving said something like that, and I don't think he even had his God box with him. <laughs> but sometimes we treat God as if he were a computer. You know, we, we crank our problems in on this side. Uh, we call it prayer. And then we go around to the other side, and we kind of tap our foot uh, waiting for God to spit out the answer. And sometimes he seems so, so terribly slow. But you know, when you come right down to it, there is not a box in the entire universe that is big enough to hold God. God is not bound by our concepts of of height and width and depth. God is just too big to be set aside, compartmentalized, bound in. And yet, yet this same God could confine himself into an infant's frame. The same God could could give up all of, his, all of his abilities and walk the dusty road of a country that's probably not any bigger than some counties in the state of Florida. This same God could cross the threshold of death and do all of that not because he was compelled to, he could place himself at the disposal of human beings simply because he chose to do that for the sake of sinful human beings. And we know that the grave itself could not hold him. In fact, not even the breadth of human contemplation can even understand the vastness of our God. He can't be bound. You can't keep him in a box. You know, I've got a sneaking suspicion that if Amos were alive today, he would still be preaching the same sermon. God is with us. God is with us in everything that we do. When you get up in the morning and you flick on the television and you watch the morning news, no matter how bad it is, God is still there along with you. And he still has things in control. And when you get the kids or the grandkids ready and send them off to school, God goes with them. Because the math and the science are his creation. And the art and the music, 
That's part of God's creativity. And in the give and take of the business world, God is there also. In fact, God wants us to do it the right way, His way. And when you're on the golf course, God is there pointing out to you that for all Arnold Palmer, that may be a chip shot, but for you, it's a three iron at the very least. God is there in the hospital during those hours of dialysis, during the time of chemotherapy. God is there holding a hand during childbirth when a young mother is doing her very best not to comment on uh, the parentage of her spouse. <laughs> and God is there in the most intimate moments of a young couple, simply to remind them that it is a time of giving, not of taking. You know, if, uh, if Amos had lived two millennia after he did, if Amos lived during our time, he would still be preaching the same sermon. You can't put God in a box. God doesn't pay any attention to uncrossable lines drawn in the sand. God insists on being a part of every single aspect of our life. And it's not a question of our inviting him in. He's already there. It's just a matter of recognizing that he is indeed a part of our life. He is a part of every single particle of our being. And it is great by grace. And it is only by grace that we can offer up our lives as an acceptable sacrifice before the throne of God. You know, the Sunday after I preached that sermon about a God box at that little uh, church, that little mission church, one of the teenagers, one of the teenage girls came up to me after the, uh, after the service, and she said that she had been embarrassed that I had used a cardboard box to talk about God. So she went home that afternoon and she built a professional God box. And in the box, she put a cross to remind us of the very heart of our faith. And she painted on the outside of the box, the Mogan David, the Star of David, to remind us where we came from. And she even painted a golden, uh, a golden circle to remind us that worship of the almighty dollar is always destructive. And she brought me, she brought me the God box. And she said, here, now you can tell people that their God is much bigger than anything that they can imagine. And that he truly does <coughs> involve himself in every piece, every aspect of our lives. And you know, I wish I had brought my professional God box with me to Orlando. Because in Jesus Christ, we live, we laugh, we love, and we have our very essence. In Jesus' name, amen.